Well, good morning. It's now just about eight o'clock on the morning of Friday, the 15th of June. I'm Andy. This is my allotment. Uh, going to do something a little bit different today because uh, it's only Friday. Last video was done on uh, Saturday, so I've only had six days. Also, I've not had much chance to be down here. I've been busy all week with meetings and things like that. So there's not really much change to what's happened last time other than the fact that things have grown, as you can probably see. So instead of going around my allotment and showing you the no change, what I've decided to do is do something I used to do a long time ago when I first started doing videos, which was not just go around my own allotment, but I'd take a wander around the entire site itself and um, show you what other people were doing as well. I've had a couple of requests to go and do that again, so I'm going to do that. Uh, we do have a couple of allotments that are empty at the moment, so I'll be skipping past those. So if I go past one, that's probably why. So I'm just going to go for the ones that where people are actually on and working them, because we've got a couple of people who are ill as well. So we shall wait and see. So, walking up the main road, or the main street, track, whatever. Now, uh, this one here is Tony's. Looks like he's uh, been down, done some work. He's uh, not been um, had family problems with his mum, etc. Recently, so all that stuff at the back of the greenhouse is his. It's near, it's waist deep, actually, not knee deep, waist deep in weeds. But he has cleared out this bed, and he's got potatoes in here, and uh, a rather large uh, clump of nettles there. I presume he's going to make some nettle tea with it or something like that. So this is work in progress. He's not a chance to be down here much, but he started. What more can you say? Next one along. Now this is Darius's. Looking green, nice things in rows, looking good actually. And he's got uh, a climbing pea frame by there by the looks of it at the back. And he's built himself a little greenhouse with uh, polythene. It's going to be interesting to see how that holds up to the sun and to the wind. We've had fairly strong winds the last couple of days from the storm that's gone past. I'm not sure what storm it was, it was the name anyway. Um, and it stood up to that, but my greenhouse stood up to that, and my greenhouse got shredded by the hurricane we had in February, I think it was. I lost seven panels out of the greenhouse. Fortunately, the collie calves, so they went back in again. But still. So there's a lot of uh, stuff here going on. Lots of fruit at this end. He's got onions, uh, what looks like chives there, or maybe spring onions. Um, not sure what that one is. It looks like horseradish, I would think, there, to be honest, in the middle of that. Okay, so. This plot here is Diane's. She's got a lot of fruit at that end. I think these are globe artichokes looking at them here, I'm not certain. And there's uh, courgettes in buckets. There's nasturtiums there I can see coming through. Uh, quite a lot going on. And she's got big tomatoes in the greenhouse there. A lot bigger than mine. And a lot of comfrey. Huge amounts of comfrey here. And more fruit. There's some brambles in there, there's black currants I can see, some rhubarb, raspberries, everything's going on here. Okay, so that's what they're on the path here. So at Diane's plot on the right hand side, on the left hand side here is Ian's plot. Now Ian's recently taken on this last quarter, about a year ago I think it was. Uh, he had half at the back originally from uh, this path down. So he had this one going down to just this side of the chicken shed. He then took on another quarter with the intention of getting chickens. And then he took on this quarter when the guy having it gave it up as well. So he's got a few mixed of stuff. He's got fruit in a couple of places because he inherited two plots, etc. His greenhouse is always fantastic. He does really, really well. This plot has won a merit in the annual awards twice in a row. And looking at it, he's probably going to get another one this year. It's lovely, neat and tidy, virtually no weeds. Much better than mine. Mine's just a mess. Anyway. Oh, and he's got some chickens at the back, but we'll see those in a minute when we go around. Okay, so this plot here is Darren's. Uh, again, he's new on the site. Um, I'm not sure if he's new to gardening or not as well. Um, a lot of work still to be done on it. A lot of things to be cleared out. But he also has chickens. So there are now uh, five of us on the plots with chickens, which is great. Okay. Now this plot at the back is David's, that has not been worked at all this year, but he's looking after his chickens, he's still here. So presumably he'll get on with that and clear it out shortly. But uh, these are David's chickens and Ian's chickens on this side. And Ian's got some peas in there by the looks of it. And loads of strawberries, look at those, they look lovely. 
I'm picking mine already. I've had a couple of picks off mine, so. No, Gorge, you're not going to get fed yet. He's not here. Right. I'll just pause this while I go across the car park. Right, back again on the other side of the car park. Uh, this plot here is Sue. She's got half a plot. Um, neat, tidy. Virtually no weeds. Um, not a lot in the ground at the moment, but there's some potatoes in there. I can see and they've got fruit bushes here. Now this site doesn't have any water on tap. What we do have are these three IBCs, 1000 litre IBCs, which is fed from the garage roof next door. Unfortunately we've had no rain and these are completely and utterly, totally empty. There is nothing in them. So the only water we have on the site is what we collect ourselves or what we bring down. I bring down about 25 to 30 litres a day and I'm on every day so I can look after the chickens. I top the chicken water up and the rest of it goes in my water butt or waters my greenhouse. I can water my greenhouse with less than four litres of water. Everything else in the ground doesn't get watered. It looks after itself. That way it has deep roots and we end up with stronger plants rather than plants that get watered every day, have roots on the surface. Two days of not watering, they die because they don't know where the water is. It's not where it used to be. So that's my theory and it works. You may not get absolutely fantastically huge bulbing onions and, and such like because the onions are mostly water, but you do get a, a more sustainable crop. So uh, the water tank on site here has been emptied by just one person um, and they are now struggling because they haven't got any water. And they were using two, three hundred litres every time they watered, two, three times a week. So you can see how that fast that would empty the uh, 3,000 litre IBCs that weren't full in the first place. That person now needs 300 litres of water. I bring down 30 and that's enough for me. Anyway, this is Ian's plot. Uh, coming on nicely, lots of work done, lots of little sweat raised beds on here. And he's doing very well indeed with this. And I think this one's Ian's as well here down to the scarecrow and the greenhouse. Going on to Steve's. Now he's got... Uh, some temporary netting up here, looks like the uh, wind the other night has blown it off. He's got some purple sprouting at the back, which is doing really well. That's, that's fairly late for purple sprouting, or early, whichever you look at, because I've had all mine, and mine's been out for a while. And then he's got more cabbages here. Whether these have netting over, I don't know. It looks like they ought to have, but I uh, can't see it anywhere, the netting, so maybe, maybe not. Okay, then we've got this side. Now, this is Melissa's area. Relatively new to gardening, it used to be only for three years, and this was where the bees were originally kept. And it was like a bit of a wilderness when she came in. All the back was covered in ivy, which was coming off three feet out from the from the fence. She's trimmed all that back, she's done a huge amount of work down here. A lot of weeds in here, as there are not most plots to be honest. But overall, there's a lot going on. A lot of oh, potatoes are flowering as well, lovely blue flowers. So those won't be far off ready for coming out. At this stage of the game, I'm presuming that these are going to be um, first earlies, but you never know. And just to show you how bad the sort of the weather has been, and you see the cracks on the ground there. This is what happens when you've got clay soil underneath, and you cover the top over with compost, and it's not mixed in. It's not had time for the worms to do their work. In a couple of years' time, this will be perfect. It'll be lovely and loamy and crack-free, like mine is in most beds. I've got two beds that are still like this because I haven't finished them off. But this is what happens when you first start out around here. Uh, all, the, all the clay dries and cracks into great big plates like this. Um, it's just a matter of time. It's not anything that she's done wrong, it's just time. So this one next door is in a much better condition. There are still some cracks, but this one's obviously been worked dug over. Maybe this is where the potatoes were last time, so it's been mixed a bit more. The worms will do it for you. You don't have to dig, but, um, well, we shall wait and see. Okay, this plot on this side is Prosper's plot. Uh, again, he's got quite a bit of stuff in there. We've got a lovely little tree here. Looks like a, I'm not sure if it's an apple tree or a plum tree. Could be plums, actually. Could be plums. He's got some potatoes in. Got, again, got the small raised beds that we tend to use around here. We've also got um, lots and lots of uh, onions or garlic in here. Can't tell which one they are from here. And he's got uh, a climbing frame for his beans. Uh, got greenhouse with tomatoes in the bottom planted into the ground not a lot else going on on this plot at the moment but it is relatively neat and tidy and a few bits of sweet corn slightly bigger than mine at one end it looks like it's um, succession planting maybe because he's got tall ones at the right hand side and short ones at the left i have that or the, the soil's better at the right i'm not sure which way around it is 
So I'll walk down this way. Okay, looks like he's got lots of potatoes in here in most of the beds. And these are shallots I'm looking at here because they're, they're splitting at the bottom. I'm guessing the shallots anyway, but they're all going to seed. So we need to get those fairly quickly, otherwise they'll be useless. They'll have a hard core through the centre where the um, flower has been. Okay, now this is David Jones's plot. Again here he's got lots and lots of fruit which he's got netted over, it's not the birds. He's had problems with birds like the rest of us have uh, with losing fruit. Um, come down one day and it's there, the next day it's all gone. And if it's all gone with none left, not even the green ones, it's birds that's done it. If you've got green ones left, you've got some dropped on the floor, it's humans. Um, we, he was concerned at first that someone had been down and pinched this stuff, but turns out it was just birds. Again, nice little uh, area to relax. Not that you do much of that on a lot when you've got an allotment. The gooseberries looking good. A lot smaller than my gooseberries. Uh, mine are huge bushes. And they look like Drew's large chokes there. A horseradish. And that's a, uh, a globe artichoke there with the, with the silver foliage. Uh, he's got a polytunnel of sorts, but the whole framework has gone completely. What he's got left now is netting and uh, a tarp over the top of the frame. So that's basically it. Uh, right, that's basically it for the tour because um, see, this one's been all but abandoned. This one's um, been given up. So, oh no, there's one more, one more. Sorry, I'm telling lies. I'll head back down towards my plot, back down the road. So, unfortunately, the council aren't allowing us to relet plots at the moment as um, we're having negotiations with them over a situation that's going on site. Uh, okay, this is Terry's plot. Now, Terry's been absent for most of the last few years, on and off. He's had things to do with with um, old family, uh, aged family, shall we say, not old family. Um, having to travel backwards and forwards to Wales on a regular basis, uh, dealing with um, his parents and the sale of house when the inevitable, inevitable happened and so on. But he's now here more or less full time. Uh, however, he has got lots of flowers coming on his uh, on his leeks. By the looks of it, these are leeks. So they're going to be useless by now because they will have a hard core right the way through the centre of the of the, the leek. Especially when it gets to this stage, they're almost ready for flowering. Unless he's saving the seeds, in which case he's done exactly what he's supposed to. I'm not sure which what he's doing, to be honest. Well, he comes on here fairly regular now. Um, I'm next door and I see things changing. He comes on through the day, through the week, and I come on at weekends and evenings. So we hardly ever see each other. But uh, he's a nice guy when we do. Lots of fruit. At this end, um, got looks like potatoes under there where he's got netted. I'm not sure why he's netting potatoes. If they are potatoes, I don't know. And then a lot of garlic at the back there. Some cabbages which are netted, brassicas of some sort. And I'm envious of his rhubarb, I really am. Oh, he's got asparagus in his bed as well. I've always wanted to grow asparagus, never had the space to do it. But I am really envious of that. Look at the size of that rhubarb plant. I really, I want some of that. Next, if it ever gets to the stage of splitting it, I'm having some, I'll tell you. Anyway, that's enough of the run round. Uh, 13 minutes of run round. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, seeing what other people are doing as opposed to just me. So, this is back to my plot. Now, one thing I have found here with all the winds is my sweet corn, as you can see there, are starting to be blown over. So what I'm doing, instead of digging them back in again, which is a bit difficult to do underneath netting, I'm simply standing them up. Let's see if I can do this. No, I can't do it one-handed. Hang on. I'll show you the results in a second anyway. So we're standing them up. I'm putting a brick next to it to hold it in place while it strengthens itself. There's a few bricks around on there, as you can see, because the wind has caught these quite badly over the last couple of days. But actually, these are some of these are bigger than Prosper's. Now, last year, Prosper came on and did some fantastic sweet corn, and they were huge, absolutely huge, very, very early on. So I'm not sure um, why mine are better than his this year. Maybe just later, I don't know. And I've just noticed that my potatoes at the back there are getting wilted, so I need, need watering. We've not had much rain. We've had a couple of bits, but nothing major. But anyway, going on holiday now this afternoon, going away for a weekend. So there'll be uh, no more work done this weekend here. So hopefully by next weekend, I'll have something more to show you. So from a very, very overcast but warm, allotment 
thanks for watching thank you all for subscribing i do appreciate it please leave your comments below got pictures of your allotment send them to me put them on the comments that's great show them around let's share everything we're doing and we can learn from each other anyway that's all for now bye bye